Hi, in this and Secrets, we'll be walking you through how to create a baseline inspired by Camera and Crooked's Good Times, Bad Times using Yui's Zebra. There are few artists in the drum bass scene with such an unmistakable sound as Camo and Crooked. A perfect case study of their powerfully precise aesthetic is 2017's Good Times, Bad Times, which balances ultra-crisp percussion with a languid yet cutting bass. Today we'll be recreating that bass patch using Yui's powerfully precise Zebra synthesizer. Zebra is somehow equal parts reactor and Eurorack, while being more approachable than either format. It simplifies the modular approach in a way only software can, and delivers a ton of tone and an incredibly wide sonic palette, thanks in part to its arsenal of spectral effects. We've dropped a link to the original tune below, as well as a link to download the free trial of Zebra so you can follow along, and also our project session. Here's a taste of the parts we've created today. And here they are, in the context of a tune. Before we get going, please remember to subscribe and hit the notification button. We appreciate the support. Set the tempo to 174 BPM. Drop an instance of Zebra onto a MIDI track and program the notes you see on screen now. If you don't want to sit in program, don't forget we have dropped a link to download our session below. To begin with, click on the patch browser and select init at the very bottom. This will leave us with one oscillator, one envelope and one LFO visible. We want clinical precision and consistency with this patch, so we'll click the reset button on oscillator 1, which will ensure that our oscillator starts at the same position of the wave with every new note. Now, on the very bottom of Zebra's interface, change the mode from poly to legato. We want it nice and smooth. We like the saw way we started with, now we're going to skip around a little bit in the name of instant gratification. So before we do anything more with our oscillators, let's add a filter by simply clicking an empty slot in the main grid underneath oscillator 1, the top section of Zebra, and choosing VCF1. Leave a few empty slots between the two. You can move these around later by clicking and dragging, but it doesn't hurt to leave some space in the first place. Now we'll change the filters type from the default LP Excite to LP Mid Drive. Turn the cutoff down to about 10 o'clock. Next, we'll map an envelope to the cutoff frequency by clicking underneath the first knob and switching from None to Envelope 2. Now you'll see that a new envelope magically appears in the modulator's rack to the right. Turn the attack up by about a third, same in the decay, and bring the sustain fully down. Now head back to the envelope on VCF1 and turn it to about 3 o'clock. Here's our progress so far. Next, we'll add a little additional edge to our sound. Click on an empty slot after oscillator 1 and select shape 1 to add a wave shape to oscillator 1. Now, let's move to shape 1 and start to adjust the parameters. Change the type from shape to T drive. We want to add just a little bit of edge that fades in a bit. So click underneath the first knob and select MSEG1 to make one of our multi-stage envelope generators a modulator for our shaper. Turn the knob all the way up to increase the modulator's strength. If you click on MSEG1 at the bottom of the interface, the multi-stage envelope editor will appear. By clicking on the envelope, you can add new points and you'll notice you can zoom out to create an infinitely long, infinitely complex envelope if you want. That's a lot of power. Turn the depth to about three o'clock edge to about 3 o'clock, output to 12 o'clock, and high out to around 3 o'clock. And notice a subtle but useful change in tone. Here's our progress so far. Head back to Oscillator 1, and let's visit one of Zebra's most powerful tools, the Oscillator Effects section. Here's where you'll find a variety of ways to warp a simple wave into unrecognisable territories. By all means, select different modes and play with the strength of the effects to see what it's capable of. Then, select the scale mode and turn it to about 2 o'clock to add some more harmonic richness. Move over to the mixer and crank the volume up a bit to make sure this thing hits hard. Below shape 2 in the centre grid, add another oscillator, hit the PWM switch to turn our saw wave into something very close to a square. 
Then click Reset to make sure the oscillator resets with each new note. Here's our progress so far. Notice at the bottom of Zebra's interface, there's yet another grid, this one being the effects grid. Right click on Mod Effects 1 and select Remove. Then click on the empty slot and select Rev 1 to add a reverb. Bring the range all the way down. Leave the feedback as it is. Decrease the mix to around 9 o'clock. Push the speed to around 10 o'clock and the mod to around 12 o'clock. Drop the wet down to around 7 o'clock. Above that, the reverb speed also bring that down to around 9 and 10 o'clock. And crucially, the damp to 2 or 3 o'clock. And I think we've arrived at a reverb very similar to the original. Here's our final synth sound. <laughs> We've only just scratched the surface of Zebra. We hope to explore it more deeply and unearth the right sounds to your production in upcoming Simp Secrets videos. If you like this tutorial, please do remember to subscribe and drop us a comment below if there's any tracks you'd like us to cover. If you want to get in touch also, feel free to find us on our Discord channel, there's a link below. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Mm-hmm.